So Michael, thank you very much for inviting me into your home a second time in only a matter of months. Uh, I was here a couple of months ago, wasn't I? We shot a video, I got to listen to your amazing hi-fi system. And we created a video and that video was about, you know, why hi-fi really? And I suppose the purpose of that video, and I'll link it up there for anyone who might not have seen it, is just to speak to somebody about, you know, why, why they like hi-fi enough to dedicate their time and their money into putting, you know, a, a system together, but especially one at this level, but I think any hi-fi system is interesting, you know, somebody's story. But what we didn't really talk much about was the components or the kit or, you know, really nice amplifiers and such. So, you know, I asked if I could come back and see you again to do that. And I also wanted to speak to you because you've been active and busy upgrading the system, haven't you? Tweaking a few different bits and pieces. So that's always interesting. And there was quite a few questions and comments and stuff left in the last video. And I thought we could maybe, you know, discuss a few of those as well. But I wanted to start by speaking to you about maybe what could be the elephant in the room, you know, putting out a video title, you know, the best hi-fi sound or the best hi-fi system in the world 2022 or whatever we decide to go with this time. Um, kind of how, how do you justify that? You know, and that's, a, I suppose, it is an elephant in the room type question, but, you know, to you, obviously, this is the best hi-fi system in the world, isn't it, for a certain type of music? Yeah. So tell me about that. What type of music is that? And tell us... Yeah, well, I listen mainly to jazz and soul stuff, so that's my kind of genre. Um, so I don't really listen to classical or, or sort of folk music or anything. Like Nothing's wrong with that, but I just don't listen to that. And for me, I'm looking to recreate that type of experience that I get when I go and listen to live music, when I listen to a jazz concert, or if I go to wherever. And that for me is what I'm beginning to experience now. So what I've recently done, I've, I've tried to um, add two more amps to the system. So I've now got a bi-amp system, which is 4,400 watts a channel. Michael, mate, let's talk about that in a second. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's stay on the sound quality for a second and, and, the, and the music sort of genre, because I think that's really important yeah. you know, to stress to people is that, so soul music and jazz music. And jazz, and modern jazz. Modern jazz, jazz modern, and some R&B and stuff, isn't R &B, it, that yeah. we, we yeah. was listening to before. Yeah. So based on that, there's certain sonic characteristics that I think you're looking for, the things yeah. that we've discussed, you know, like the mid-range quality. And I, yeah. I actually want to talk about my experiences this time listening to the system, right. because yeah. I feel like that could be useful. For, for certain people. So me listening to this system, we listened to a variety of music this morning, which we're gonna give some recommendations at the end of the video for people. Mm. Listening to the system, obviously it's, 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 a, it's a big size room, yeah? It's a reasonable size room with the speakers really far apart. And the way the system's set up with, obviously with the subwoofers at the back of the room, it's quite a lot of unorthodox things going on here. Really uh, and you might look at it from an outsider and think, you know, the guy's crazy, that's never gonna work. But actually it does work. You've set it up to make it work really well. And the bits that are really impressive is the vocals and the mid-range. They kind of float in the air in a really delicate fashion. But it's not delicate where it's at the point where it's too smooth and you're losing detail. It's just delicate where you can appreciate it without really having to concentrate. You know, the vocals are just delivered with this lovely sort of smooth, graceful sweetness. And I, I, I called the system last time I was here like infinitely smooth. Yeah. That's changed a little bit now, which I think with some of the some of the things that you've done, but it's still a very smooth and what I'll call like a graceful system. You know, you don't you don't really have to concentrate to listen. You just sit and listen to the music, and then it's also quite a, a, well an overall you know big scale of sound. I think a lot of that's coming from the from the subwoofers, and also the speakers being wide apart. And you're big on not having anything around them, aren't you? Let's, Correct, yeah. let's quickly talk about that because I know that's something you strongly believe in. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, my experience has taught me that the more air you create around the speaker, for any speaker, the better the better you're gonna get if you wanna create that holographic or that atmosphere that you can get if, with the right recording, that is. So for me, it was very important, and not just um, speaker-wise, but aesthetically. I like to look at something that looks nice, and if you have a system that's right in the middle, I feel that takes away from that sort of like that quality that you can get if you just sit back and look and all you're seeing is the speakers and, and nothing else, so to speak. So it's not, not interfering in your vision. That's interesting. And obviously yeah. the, the room plays into you know, the fact that you know, you've got X amount of space. So this is a big room. It's yeah. also a, you know, a, a basement type room as well, which I'm sure has, a, has an effect on things, you know, isolating you know, the external noise. Going back to the sound of the system for a second, Something that we spoke about, something that you're really, you really like about the system is the, is the stereo image. And you talked about like a holographic sound. And you was putting on music where you was trying to demonstrate that the way the system presents the music in the room, uh -huh. i.e. it throws the sound out into the room and gives you the, the, obviously it's the illusion, isn't it? An illusion that you're listening to a, 
a sound field, like almost like a surround sound type Correct, of yeah. effect, mm. but obviously coming from stereo speakers. And you was playing some piano pieces that demonstrated that. And I can't remember the song you played, but one it had, a, I'm sure, it had a sax on the right hand side, was it, and a piano on the left. Correct, yeah, and then yeah. you put on some, was it like a church organ track? Was, Correct. Yeah, yeah. That was really impressive. And then there was something with a load of reverb. What was that you played? That that was the one with the reverb with the saxophone. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, because that was particularly yes. Yeah, so you pulled out some uh, some cracking pieces of music, which is why I wanted to share that this morning. Well, it gives you the illusion of the room being, or the the the, the room being bigger than it is, yeah. which is what I like. And then you were saying about what you like about the speakers, obviously the TAD reference ones. It's reference right. ones, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What you liked about them is they're, what well, our class is, their transparency, i.e. the speakers are there, and you, but, but you don't really concentrate on the speakers at all. You just concentrate on the different aspects of the music that you're listening to, like the church organ on the left or the saxophone right, right. on the right, and then all the reverb echo effect that was happening in that music, in that particular song. Um, so I assume that's what attracted you to these speakers, really. That's that's been the big part of the appeal. I knew about Tad and I heard about them before because they are referenced. They're used in recording studios. They're record, used in air studios and other studios all around the world. So they've got a reputation they've had for many, many years. So I knew their quality of product was going to be good, but I hadn't realised how good till I had them in my house. So, yeah. And let's quickly cover that because I feel like some people may be watching the last video might assume, you know, this is a guy with a lot of money to spend and he's just bought a system willy-nilly and thrown it all in the room. No. You're an audiophile, right? Aren't you? You've been doing this a long time. You've played with lots of kit. And we, we did speak about that last time, but I didn't put that in the video because there's only so much you can squeeze into, you know, 20 minutes. And I wanted it to be more about you and your focus yeah. as, as an individual rather, rather than anything else. Um, but you've kind of built your way up to this level, haven't you, really? Yeah. It's not, you don't just, you haven't started here. No, I started here. when I was 16. I mean, the first system I got when I was 16 and I've just built it up over the years. But I like the fact that Rather than get bits and pieces from different manufacturers, I wanted to use the R&D of this company called TAD, who has got the synergy already with the, with the equipment, with the amps, with the preamp, with the speakers. There are very few manufacturers that do amps, speakers, preamp, the whole works. CD, they do the whole lot all in one. So you don't have to worry whether that matches this or this matches that. It's all been done for you. So I thought to myself, well, why not try that and see what happens? Well, on that, let's quickly talk about, you know, this amplifier here, because this is the fourth of these that are here at the moment, right. isn't there? Yeah. So so there was two of these here last time, and right. now you're using an additional two yeah. to buy amp the system. This is a big amplifier. We just moved it around here. It nearly right. broke my back actually picking yeah. it up. Was it 75 kilos 75 or something? Kilos, that's, a, yeah. that's a big amplifier. And it doesn't yeah. look it, it's really, it's really deceiving. And obviously I'll show you know, the viewers what's inside. Because even that's, it's deceiving because it looks really simplistic, but also, Everything's kind of you know, crazy sized, isn't it? Everything's kind of Correct. oversized. So, yeah. so it's oversized, and the whole point how they've designed it is that the, the enemy of this amplifier is vibration. So they've got special feet for anti vibration, and everything about it's built like a battleship, basically. So it will last a lifetime. Because it looks like a dual mono design when you, when you look at it with a naked eye. Correct. So, is this a stereo or is this no, a mono? So it's it a mono, mono, but still dual. dual. A dual mono mono. All right, so it's, it's just uses two transformers, but but it can. I mean, they do do a stereo version of this, so um, yeah, up, which uses the two transformers that you got in there. But as it stands, it's a, it's a mono. Um, it's three hundred and fifty watts into eight ohms and seven hundred watts into four ohms. In terms of a difference, then you know, I, I got to hear the system last time with just the two amps, and then this time with the four amps. So I, I think I could you know hear a difference, but obviously I'm going from memory. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think was or has been the difference between two and four? Well, again, I mean, you know, it's not. It's obviously proportionate. As you spend more, you don't necessarily get more out of it. But what I'd noticed mainly is that you get more. How can I say? Um, Clarity on the, on the mid and treble, I noticed. Obviously, this is my second time listening to the system, so I'm already a little bit more familiar with it, yeah. which I think makes me a little bit more critical as well, because the first time you're, you're listening to something, you're just overwhelmed by you know, the quality, the smoothness, the scale of sound, and the, and the bass, obviously, from the from the 6 rel subwoofers. But listening to it this time, I thought there was a little bit more, just a little bit more bite to the sound, a little bit more focus, a little bit more... It's hard to say this because it's such a graceful, delicate system to listen to, but it was just like, like the camera lens had just been focused yeah. just that bit more and there was a little bit more clarity. And the one song that stood out to me was the, there's a, a song of a band who has a big kick drum Correct. kicking yeah. in the middle. And that, that really impressed me last time for the kick, you know, the size of the bass, which you kind of expect with, you know, the, the big six subwoofers. But this time I was focusing more on how tight that note was. And, it, and I could, and this sounds really cheesy, but for me, I could hear more of the, I don't know what you'd even call it, like the, 
the thing that hits the That's drums. Right, I know the, the pedal. It's you know, the pedal, yeah. The pedal, I, I was kind of hearing more into the, the clarity of that, which could, could just be the second time of hearing the song. But I, I don't think so. I think I would have noticed that the first time because that was a really standout characteristic. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's really stand out to me about this system is, is the imaging. You know, I want to come back to that because when we played the song with the kind of designed in reverb, yeah. which I assume that it must have recorded that in some church they did, or probably, something yeah. like that. So yeah. it's a big saxophone over here. Correct. And that kind of moves around. I can't do it because it's it behind around, me. Yeah. It moves around, yeah. The sax player moves around there and then it's like a big pipe organ, is it? That's right, there? yeah. There's an organ. And the way that... <laughs> that's a phenomenal recording, but the way that reverb was kind of moving around in this plane here, like, you know, like a sax player moving around and then that, that contrasted with the big church organ, which is a more more diffuse sound. Yeah, right, it's recorded yeah, yeah. further away. Um, that was pretty... Really, really impressive. I think what's interesting <clears> is <throat> having big subwoofers at the back. There's a lot of bass... And the, the bass quality goes up and down depending on the recording. Some stuff we was listening to, I was thinking it sounds a little bit heavy on the right. Some yeah. some things are a little bit heavy on the left. But other things, it's like, well, this sounds absolutely perfect for this. So it, it makes you doubt, have you got it set up right? Or is it, no, is it, no, is no. it recording? You know, is it recording not quite perfect? You know, when you're, when you're scaling, up, scaling that recording up to this kind of scale of sound. So, you know... You, you can nitpick everything, can't you? You can nitpick every system and you can always you know, want more and always want better, which we obviously want to talk about in the second. But you know, part of the reason why I'm here is to have a closer look at the components. Correct. So let's quickly do that and then we can come back and maybe discuss a bit more about the music. To run through Michael's system, we have to reverse ourselves and look at the rear of his room because as he mentioned, he doesn't want anything other than the speakers visually at the front. He has a huge piece of furniture that houses his kit and either side of it are a six pack or really a dual three stacked rail acoustics number 25s, rails flagship subwoofers that have 15 inch drivers and a thousand watts of power each subwoofer. And considering they are placed at the rear of the room with no DSP at all being used, they do sound really phenomenal and make all the difference in this system. And I briefly listened with and without and what they do to the overall sound for its scale, its warmth and its soundstage and of course its bass is huge. For a source, Michael has a five box esoteric stack which includes a CD and SACD transport and dedicated power supply, a dedicated clock. Then there are dual mono DACs, one whole DAC for each of the left and right channels. And it's hard for me to say too much about these units as understandably Michael didn't want to pull them all apart so I could video them more, but they are very impressive units from the outside. One standout thing is that CD transport is suspended on one level of a Steel Points Hi-Fi rack. From the esoteric stack, the analog signal feeds into the TAD C600 preamplifier and Michael did take the lid off so we could look inside. And it's interesting to see the completely separated left and right channels. There are a lot of TAD labeled capacitors being used and what looks like a lot of copper being used as a shield or screen of sorts. Looking on the TAD website, it says the base of the preamplifier is designed to stop vibration and weighs 15 kilograms on its own. They say it's a very high precision but simple designed preamplifier. On the left of it, the big black box, well that's the preamplifier's power supply and it's huge. The signal then feeds into four TAD monoblock amplifiers that are bi-amping the reference one speakers. And as I mentioned, these weigh 75 kilograms each and I have lifted some heavy amplifiers in my time, but nothing like this. Looking inside, the power supplies, the capacitors, the cooling, it's all huge. But things do look relatively simple, but I'm not an amplifier's designer to say any more. But these are very serious amplifiers. You can see that even with a non-trained eye. And I really like the speaker cable terminals that TAD use. They are big and chunky in quality. Remember, all four of these were at the rear of the room. We moved two out to the front so I could show you them easier on camera. And that means Michael has very long speaker cable runs all hidden to his main speakers at the front of the room. And the speakers are the TAD reference one. And these speakers feature the famous Beryllium coaxial mid-range and tweeter driver with dual 10 inch bass woofers and a specially designed cabinet that is braced and made from multiple materials to be inert or silent, Tad like to say. And it has a horn inspired bass port at the bottom. 
and Michael is then suspending the speakers on still points isolators. There is a mixture of cabling in the system from Yorma Design, Synergistic Research and some other manufacturers. So as you can see, this is a very serious, very, very high ticket, ultra high end hi-fi system that has an exceptionally high performance. And Michael is a lucky guy to be able to afford and own such a system. So Michael, obviously we spoke earlier in the video about the music and music choices, again, just a reminder people, you know, soul and jazz and modern yeah. jazz is, is really your cup of tea. But you played, you know, a bit of a variety to me earlier on this morning. So I asked, you know, can, can you tell us, can you tell us about the albums and the songs that we've been talking about? Yeah, well, one of the albums which I like a lot, which has recently just come out in January this year, it was called Black Acid Soul. And the track we listened to was called Blackbird, so that's one album. What do you like about that album then? It's well recorded, and she also sings br brilliantly, I think. So um, it's a combination of everything. Because that was on while I was setting everything up, and yeah. there's some lovely pieces of vocal in that. Some lovely. Uh... Correct. I don't, I don't think classes. Is, I don't think it's gospel, but she's got a very kind of gospelly, soulful voice. Correct. She and has yeah, some yeah. beautiful pieces, and it's beautifully recorded as well. So yeah. Then the other one, which is a saxophone, which you heard in the church, with the other one, is called. Fascination with Sound. And then we've got Herbie Hancock's uh, Gershwin World, which uh, we also listened to. So what, what piece was that then we listened to? Um, we listened to, I think it was track two, which is with the, t with the trumpets and stuff, but it's well recorded. And we've got another one, which again, these are for this is for demo. This is Dali, In Admiration of Music, and it's volume number four, which is very hard to get hold of, by the way. <laughs> I'll borrow that and I'll take that with me. So that, that was the thingy track, wasn't it, with the big kick drum, wasn't it? That's that right, that, yeah, 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 big was, kick drum on like track, ten, track, track 10. Track yeah. 10 is like a band, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Then if you've got an SA CD player, if somebody knows what that is, but it's a super audio CD player, you can play this, which is called Showcase, um, which was where we heard the other saxophone with the other um, thing called Opus 3. Opus is a very good um, company. And then lastly, we have your favourite lady, <laughs> Diana Krell. Uh, which is Wallflower, Wallflower, yeah, Wallflower, um, and it's just a very good recording. SACD again. Because obviously Diana Crow gets a little bit of stigma in terms of no, of you know, being so a, you every, know, every, a every, uh, every every show you go to, they play her. <laughs> but I mean, it's just brilliantly recorded, and that's why I like listening to it. And if you get it through the right system, it can sound spine tingling. So. I mean, to be to be fair, that's what, what, what does that class as modern jazz? Does it is that is that in? That I wouldn't category? call it jazz. I'd call it more contemporary kind of kind of a sort of like a jazz clubby kind of sound okay. it depends on what music but she has all different yeah. so let's ask that what, what class does modern jazz then what, 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 what's modern jazz is a couple of things like yellow jackets you've got um, some of Herbie Hancock stuff Santana type of stuff but people could say Santana's rockish jazz but I like modern, not classical jazz, if you know what I mean. And classical jazz is more where you hear the cymbals and they're doing that kind of drum beat and stuff. Okay, okay. I prefer just all the different things they do. So is, is modern a little bit more varied? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's more soul, soul oh, okay. orientated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And soul, obviously, is the other one. Like Luther Vandross and George Duke is my favourite. Marcus Miller. So where, where's all this yeah. come from then? This love of this type of music is that from childhood? Do you think? Yeah, yeah, it's from I've been growing up on it all my life. So oh, no, another note. Thank you for inviting me back and let me come back and, uh, and listen to the system again. You know, it's always a, a it's always a treat to listen to any other audio file system because I learn something every single time. You know, you pick up bits of you know, there's bits that you like, there's bits that maybe you think, well, you know, that's not quite to my taste, but you always learn something. It's like I, le I like how this presented. I like that. How can I incorporate that back into my system? And as we're coming out of COVID now and, and hi-fi shows are starting back up and the Munich hi-fi show should be on in a couple no, of, of course, months. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to use this as a, as a, what's the word? As like a, a way to recommend people to go and listen to other hi-fi systems because well, well, that's the idea. you always learn yeah, something. Yeah. You always learn but, something. And it's not about how much money you spend. It's how you how well you spend it and you incorporate yeah. it and how you try and create that synergy. Well, look, Michael, again, thank you very much yeah. for inviting me in. I'll take your hand, but you're miles away and I'm scared yeah, I might, no, <laughs> scared yeah. I might touch, your, uh, touch your amplifier. But no, thanks very much for having me back yeah. and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you haven't already. Of course you have. And thanks for watching, Michael, thank you. Yeah. Cheers, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye.